My goal in making art and beautiful art is to remind people that there is beauty all around us and all you really have to do is look to find it and then make a gesture to create it. It doesn't have to be a piece of art. It can just be that you make yourself a gift to another person, you say kind words, you know, you make a point to do something different. The hot glass, which is by far one of the most exciting to work with, it has one of those kind of like trickster, tantalizing, you know, draw you in kind of relationships because you want to touch it and you have to touch it, but you have to use all these other means of touching it. And you get very close to hands-on with certain tools. The thing I'm most drawn to it is that it's always changing. You can walk around it, the same piece, and it's going to look different from every angle. And then when you bring in different light, it's going to also look different. So it's always kind of evolving and taking on some part of its environment and reflecting it back. And so that happens to be why I am most drawn to working with glass, because it's not just a static constant. It's always moving or changing. So I focus a lot on wings because anything that has wings has a sense of freedom, has this ability to leave Earth, leave all the things that are holding us down, and in a way, you know, has this otherworldly power. And I definitely wish that I could fly, but um, I'm also a little bit afraid of heights. So we'll see how that goes. I can't make the pieces that I really want to make by myself. It is a team effort and a collaborative effort, and hot glass is frequently considered dangerous. I think, really, people are much more dangerous than hot glass, and, and the wrong people in a hot shop is definitely dangerous, more dangerous than the glass. There's a sensual nature to working with clay. It's uh, very much like caressing an individual into existence and bringing that person to life. The one thing early on in my work, I didn't want that sculpture to just be a piece of art. I wanted it to have its own identity. I wanted it to be complete all its arms, legs, head, you know, everything. A lot of times you see these figures and they're chopped off or this or that, and I couldn't bring myself to do that because I felt like this is an, this is an individual and she has something to say in her sheer existence. My father and I related in an artistic way in an unspoken way. He, um, he couldn't necessarily, he, he was a, a filmmaker and a f nature photographer, and he, he didn't necessarily speak about what he was most passionate about, aside from all the, the film stuff, but the nature and why, he didn't say. But it was what we shared, and it, it was unspoken. Um, and my mother shares in that as well. Our, our passion and our love of nature is just, that's like the main chord between the three of us. Um, what that follows is that he and my mother set an example of, of really being true to yourself and finding what you love to do in life and then figuring out a way to make a living at it somehow. And that if you didn't do that, there, you, I guess you could be happy, but that was a level of satisfaction and drive and, and interest that was vital to living a full life. He uh, passed away at the end of 07, but actually on his deathbed, I was able to tell him, and it was ironic because my first big job was with Nikon and it was a commercial job but I was able to say dad I got that job and I remember the look on his face because he knew I'd be okay because I'd, I'd gotten that first big job and it was commercial he was always 
really encouraging me you know, to do architectural glass, to do commercial work, even though he knew that there's a sacrifice that you make as an artist. But um, he also just, I mean, he was always doing all different kinds of things. And, and I think just me figuring out how to build my skills and how to apply them as an artist and in, in the world, you know, you get a degree in art, but they don't tell you how to make a living. But early on, before I was even out of school, I had my website, I was marketing, and he was all behind that, just to try and make me as self-sufficient as possible so that he could stop worrying. Uh, he didn't know he wasn't gonna be here to worry, but, um, but so at least he had that, he knew it'd be okay.